Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me. This devotion is part of a series of devotions I'm doing on Thine Kingdom Come as part of a global initiative uh, to pray for people that don't know yet, know Christ within them and haven't become His followers. And I want to encourage you today to pray and believe God for those you know that aren't yet followers of Christ. But today's title is To Thine Be the Kingdom and the Power and the Glory from the Lord's Prayer where Jesus taught us to pray this. He says in verse 14, uh, no, excuse me, um, verse 13 of Matthew 6, and, lead, and bring us not into temptation, lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. You know, King David said in Psalm 62, verse 11, he says, God has spoken once, Twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy, for you render to each one according to his work. David was actually saying the same thing that Jesus is teaching us in the Lord's Prayer, that when we're in a place of prayer, God wants us to come into a revelation that all the power and the glory and the kingdom, all the kingdom, power and glory belongs to Him. You see, there are many powers in this world. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. And those powers can be quite intimidating and can hold us down unless we know the truth. And you see, this is the power of prayer. When you spend time with the Lord in prayer, He draws you up through the power of His resurrection into the consciousness of His glory, of His kingdom, glory and power in heaven. And you begin to realize that Jesus has been given the name above every other name, above every power, above every dominion, above every rule, above anything that could be named in this world and even the world to come. He stands above it all and you come into that revelation, you come into the glory of it. Let, let me read you this amazing scripture from the book of Revelations, chapter one, starting at verse four, right? John, to the seven churches in Asia, he says, may grace, God's unmerited favor be granted to you and spiritual peace, the peace of Christ's kingdom from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits, the sevenfold Holy Spirit before the throne of God. From Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn from the dead, the first to be brought back to life, and the prince ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who ever loves us and has once and for all loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood and formed us into a kingdom, a royal race, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and power and majesty and dominion throughout the ages forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Behold, he's coming with clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn and gaze at him uh, as, and beat their breasts in mourning and lamenting. Even so, amen. The Lord Jesus is coming and he says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. He who was and who, uh, he who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the ruler of all. And this goes on and on and on. It's so powerful. When you read this, you see the dominion and the power and the glory or the kingdom, power and glory that's awaiting you and me in our time of prayer. You know, there are many stories throughout history where we see God's servants face forces of darkness that are so forceful that it intimidated them and threatened them. I mean, think about Moses. Moses had such a powerful experience at the burning bush and was so led by God's power to go to Pharaoh. And he met Pharaoh and at his first encounter, and God had told him, 
Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Moses, Pharaoh will harden his heart. And I am working through all of this so that I can demonstrate my glory and my power to my people so they may know that I am the Lord their God who's delivering them and that I stand above all the gods of Egypt, above all the forces of darkness. And while Moses went and faced Pharaoh, and he got so thrown out by Pharaoh, so to speak, and then went back to his own people, and they got all frustrated and depressed because the Bible says they were harshly oppressed and impatient in spirit. Moses felt so deflated. He said, Lord, you've chosen the wrong man. I can't do it. Even though he knew the battle that was raging and the Lord himself who was the Lord of this battle, who was fighting it. He, he knew this battle was not his, it was the Lord. Still, he found it difficult. And you and I can find it difficult when we face the different challenges of life. And that's why the Lord would say to us, spend time with me in prayer and I'll show you that the kingdom, the power and the glory belongs all to me that there are no forces in this world or in heaven on earth or under the earth or anywhere that are able to conquer you. Let me read you in closing Romans chapter 8. Let me read you this in Romans chapter 8, right? Starting at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? This God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore who is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, the sword? As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, dear friend, I understand how sometimes we can feel so powerless. We can feel so empty of any worth or glory. We can feel so low and heavy. Oh my goodness, it can be so bad. When the Lord in 19, and I'll close with this, in 1989, I think it was, or 88, sent me to Folkestone to hold a Jesus Now Crusade at the Leescliff home. I spent some time with some people to encourage them to, to you know, work with me. After I'd spent time with them for only about 45 minutes, I, I felt so heavy and low that I could barely breathe. And I left the house, and I'll tell you the truth, when I went to that house, I felt God's strength to do anything, to move mountains. I felt faith to move mountains. When I left that house, the mountain was overtaking me. Oh, I felt so heavy, no, I, I couldn't think anymore. I didn't have any more faith to do anything. I couldn't do anything anymore. And I felt this pit of despair, this pit of depression pulling on me, pulling on me. And I've been in that pit many times in my life. So I knew, okay, I have no choice. I've got to get depressed. I've got to get low. You know, that's, I've been there. I used to always live there. But there was a different spirit inside of me. Same spirit we see in Caleb. There was a different spirit in me, the spirit of Christ. And it gave me this, no, I'm not coming. No, I'm not going to get depressed. No. I'm not going down there. It's the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ drawing us up into His kingdom, His power and His glory. No. And I felt this, no, you're not going down there. But this feeling was so forceful. Yes, you're coming down here. And all of a sudden, feeling these two forces contending with each other, I just began to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the Holy Ghost. And I just kept praying and praying and praying. After an hour and a half of praying like that, 
boom, the darkness broke in its power as the glory of Christ triumphed over the darkness in me. And my goodness, did the Lord give me phenomenal breakthrough and phenomenal vision and power to do what He asked me to do. And this is what I'm talking to you about. Spend time with the Lord in prayer and you'll see His kingdom, power and glory breakthrough in you in measures that it's time for you to see again. Let's pray together for those loved ones, hey? Father, we pray for people that don't know you yet, that are still lost in darkness, that they may be drawn by your spirit to Christ and receive a warm welcome in your presence through the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the working of your spirit in our lives, Father, that you're lifting us up by the power of Jesus Christ into your kingdom, power and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless you. See you soon.